we saw in Chelyabinsk was the greatest recorded meteor strike ever. All that stuff coming out of Russia on February 15th of 2013 was sensational in the sense it was wow. A 17 to 19 meter uh, meteor strike Russia, had they, injured a thousand and cost an upwards of 40 million dollars uh, due to damages. This Chelyabinsk event was really a wake-up call. Well, you ask a difficult question in how much stuff falls to Earth in a year. Meteorites land on the Earth all over the place. It's random, essentially. There's probably several things the size of a basketball or a softball somewhere or on the Earth every day. We think, with strong evidence, that asteroid hunters have discovered over 95% of the Earth-crossing asteroid population that's bigger than a kilometer. Now, Chelyabinsk was a heck of a lot smaller. That was less than 20 meters in diameter. But that's a, a rare event, but it's not a 100-year event. It may be a 30-year event. So is it worthwhile to monitor for the small stuff? Well, I think the people in Chelyabinsk who had a close call, I think they'd say yes. So let me try and make it as clear as possible with the term. Our challenge statement is this, to find all asteroid threats to human populations and know what to do about them. There were the cynics that saw an asteroid initiative announced in April post Chelyabinsk uh, as NASA's two-month turnaround time to, to build a mission that might have some support. The reality is, is that we've been in the asteroid business for many years. We had been working on the Grand Challenge concept uh, for a year and a half now. That said, Chelyabinsk raised awareness, uh, not just because of where it hit, but because we had dashboard cams. We had so much good footage from these dashboard cameras, uh, security cameras, and other things, and we could see the shadows, and so we know the trajectory, and, and I think that gave that initiative a lot of, of, of momentum. The grand challenges are ways of bringing in new ideas. It's a tool for working on problems that are bigger than a single agency's ability to do on its own. If someday in the future we discover well in advance that an asteroid that's big enough to cause a mass extinction is going to hit the Earth, and we alter the course of that asteroid so it doesn't hit us, it will be one of the most important accomplishments in all of human history. So the mission that was announced at the budget, the Asteroid Redirect mission, the concept is we find an asteroid that's seven to 10 meters in diameter. Uh, we then launch a spacecraft uh, that uses solar electric propulsion that NASA is already working on and sends the spacecraft out to that asteroid, that targeted asteroid, uses a capture device to grab that asteroid and then moves that asteroid into a lunar orbit. By putting it near the moon, it allows us a destination so that those early test missions could then go to this asteroid in lunar orbit, bring back samples for us to study uh, whether we can get origins of the solar system, maybe there's water, we don't know exactly what type of asteroid would, would get repositioned there, uh, but it provides a great destination for these missions that we've already got underway. live in a pretty busy neighborhood. The Earth is certainly not alone. Asteroids fly by the planet weekly, and this was just a very visible reminder of that reality. How do we observe and learn more and get down to where we know where these 20, 30, 40 meter objects are that are crossing our orbit? And we can do these things. It's just a question of will. This is the one problem, one natural disaster that we actually have the ability to change our fate around and actually have uh, the skill to solve. We can then hopefully in, in generations from now say we, we may have left the world in a mess in a lot of ways, 
But here's one problem that you don't have to worry about.